Come on, raise the sound to Him. Raise the sound of worship to Him. Raise the sound of worship to Him. His glory is in this place. There's such a weight of His glory in this place. Raise the sound of worship to Him. Eternal, immortal. You are indeed the only one. You are the only one. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. such an atmosphere of his glory there's such a weight of his glory in this place Finally, mortal, you're the only congregation sing. Eternally, mortal, you're the only Eternally, mortal, you're the only Truly, eternally mortal, you're the Lift your hands. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Come on, His presence is here right now. Ah, glorious, so glorious. Sing it to Him, you are. You are glorious, so glorious.
His presence is glorious in this place. You are, you are glorious. So hands everybody you alone these are the honor so we lift you high Yahweh, Yahweh. come and participate tonight we lift you is mighty in this place there's such a tangible tangible weight of the presence and the glory of God this is how you are changed in his glory this is how you are transformed just for a moment forget about everything around you and just fix your gaze on Jesus his presence is so strong Such an awesome God Such an awesome God Such an awesome God
Now we lift our hands. Before I preach, there are people that God wants to visit right now. He showed me this afternoon. And right now, I see the angels of God moving across this place. Hands lifted, eyes closed. There are seven people that God wants to visit tonight before we sit down to the teaching. Seven of you. And the vision the Lord showed me, I saw him putting something on your head. I saw him putting something on your head. I don't know what that is. That could be an anointing. But for the seven of you, the Lord is saying that your sensitivity to the things of the Spirit will become hyperactive in the days ahead. That's the word I heard, hyperactive. Your sensitivity to the Spirit will become hyperactive. If you used to see before, it will be times 10. If you used to hear it before, it will increase. There is an anointing coming upon you to increase your capacity. Lift your hands. Holy Ghost, from my left to my right, from the front to the back, who are those seven people right now? I ask that you place your hand upon them. Your sensitivity will become hyperactive. Seven of you. Seven of you. Seven of you. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's going to be a strong activity of the Holy Spirit upon your life in the days ahead. You will become extra sensitive. You will hear His voice at all times. You will be caught up in the visions of the Lord. Your heart will see, understand and know things, says the Spirit of the Lord. Runa lava habrandoske, lene brandi lige bonda suria, branda la habrande gede debi. It says, and times of refreshing will flow from the presence of the Lord. Times and of of refreshing will flow from the presence. Of the Lord there are a number of people here right now you begin to feel it will happen to many people but there are few of you you begin to feel something cold being poured upon you you begin to feel it now something cold being poured upon you the presence of God is coming upon you afresh and that season of spiritual dryness comes to an end says the Spirit of the Lord that, spirit, that season of spiritual dryness comes to an end. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. He said, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Freshness is coming to you. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God Such an awesome God So let my heart Be the temple Of your spirit And let my spirit Feel the warmth of your embrace there are people God is visiting now that's why I'm singing let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh Lord I want to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise 
fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Please, ushers, if you can, I want you to help me with these people. But the Lord said there are five people here. You are going to be a vessel of fire. A vessel of fire. Five of you. And the Holy Ghost will pick you now. Five of you. He will anoint you with the cloven tongues as of fire. And there rested upon them cloven tongues as of fire. A vessel of fire. There are five of them. You will know by the manifestation. You will know ushers by the manifestation. Five of them. A vessel. A vessel. A vessel of fire a vessel of glory a vessel a vessel come into the realm where you begin to transact with angels come into a higher place in the spirit come into angelic dimensions Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Your life will never be the same. Eyes closed. I just saw the Lord touch three brothers. Eyes closed, everybody. Before we begin to teach tonight, I saw the Lord touching three brothers. It may be anybody, it may even be an usher. Eyes closed everywhere three of you men I see the hand of God coming upon you mightily father let that hand descend upon them at the count of three one two and now three touch 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 Touch, 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 that's it, that's it, this presence is heavy upon you. When we come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one to compare with you. Touch, I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure. Hey, Abayana. It's calling me deeper. 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 It's calling me deeper. Deeper, 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 
He's calling you deeper. That's for somebody tonight. Deeper. Come into the wells of His presence. Come into the wells of His presence. Why stay outside? When there is abundance in his well, he said, But thou will satisfy them with the abundance of your house and cause them to drink of the rivers of thy pleasure. He's calling me deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper, he's calling you deeper in the midst of all you are going through right now. Deeper, deeper, and I'm at his and I'm mine. Father, tonight I pray in the course of this series, I pray that you visit your people. Let there be a turnaround and a shift in their lives, spiritually and all around. Let the weight of your glory rest upon everyone in this room and those online. And I ask that you truly transform us by the power of your word in Jesus name please be seated quietly God bless you my prayer today before coming is that this will not just be another teaching series that will just exhaust and put behind us I ask the Lord to give everyone an experience I ask the Lord for a tangible experience there is no need listening when your lives cannot be transformed and thoroughly imparted by the information that you are listening to there is no need there is absolutely no need the difference between the ministry of the word and every other information that you can listen to is the transforming power the transforming effect of the word of God it is more than just words there is life inside of it and as you are listening there is an activity that is going on in your spirit suddenly you discover that your desires have been altered you discover that you are no longer the same person you were when you came in you will be changed his glory revealed when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory Reveal when the spirit takes over your soul. Thank you, Father. Welcome everyone to Numatech. God bless every one of us for coming. Those of us online, God bless you. And I know that the Lord is reaching out to you wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Let's continue. Let's try to just see if we can continue from where we stopped last week. We started a series, The Spiritual Man. The Spiritual Man. The attempt or the goal of this series is to x-ray from scriptures the definition of who 
a spiritual man really is the bible says a spiritual man judges all things he understands all things but he himself cannot be understood by men the spiritual man is a man that has been recreated in christ jesus and who subscribes to the ways and the principles of the kingdom of god who subscribes to the ways and the dealings of the holy spirit and want to examine the nature of such a man to the intent that it will become a part of our christian experience and that it will become part and parcel of our daily lives the bible says if we if we live in the spirit let us walk in the spirit and last week we started a journey i told you that the spiritual man is one who is born again to be born again means to have the life of god at work inside of you to be born again means to be alive in christ to be born again means to have that part of you as a man that is alive and conscious to the things of god the proof of life is god is consciousness when a man is alive physically they say he's conscious but when he's not alive they say he's unconscious the first proof of life is consciousness and so when the part of you that is conscious about god comes alive you are actually a spiritual man that is one of the criteria one of the characteristic feature of who a spiritual man truly is that is what it means to be born again the bible says except a man be born of water and the spirit and the spirit to be alive or to be born again also means to carry the image of christ upon you and i took out time to explain that to us last week that's the reason why the bible says if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away all things have become new he now carries a different image a different personality that personality is the person of christ and i want us to just continue from there today and i trust god that will exhaust this topic and come to a favorable end today in jesus name number two what is a spiritual man number two a spiritual man has the god kind or is one who has the god kind of faith a spiritual man is one who has the god kind the God kind of faith emphasis on God kind in other words in the likeness of God does God have faith yes mark 11 22 Jesus was teaching his disciples shortly after the fig tree he cursed with that and Jesus wanted to teach them a lesson of faith and he said to them in that verse 22 have faith in God the original rendition of that scripture is have the God kind of faith if there is a God kind of faith it means there is, there is a human kind of faith and the spiritual man is one who has the God kind of faith what is faith faith be faith Okay, let's look at the scripture first of all so that we can understand what faith really is second corinthians 4 verse 13 and 14 second corinthians 4 13 and 14 let's look at faith let's look at the god kind of faith what it truly means so that it can be distinguished from other kinds second corinthians 4 verse 13 and 14 and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written i believe and therefore i spoke we also believe and therefore speak verse 14 knowing that he which raised up the lord jesus shall raise up us also by jesus 
and shall present us with you faith is based on a knowledge is based on a knowing that's what we read or what we see in that scripture the bible says we have the same spirit of faith and therefore we speak as we believe they say we speak knowing this faith is sponsored by a conviction a conviction that is rooted in a knowledge of god and his word but here the bible speaks about the spirit of faith the very life of faith itself that's what it means when it says the spirit of faith it say the very life in other words that life when it exists in a man it becomes natural for the man to display a kind of faith that only can be related to the God kind and I told you that if it is truly faith there are actions that will proceed if what you have is faith there are actions that will proceed from you your conviction will compel certain actions believing is a part of faith believing is not faith the end of faith is an action that's why the writer there says we believe therefore we speak the action of declaring is because of a faith that is rooted and he said this faith is the very spirit of faith itself to have the god kind of faith means to have the spirit of faith number one it means to have the spirit of faith now the holy ghost is the life of the godhead the holy ghost is the very life of god the holy ghost is the spirit of faith and when you give your heart to the lord when you become born again the holy spirit comes to live inside of you and at that point potentially you have the god kind of faith inside of you in other words even god operates by faith there is a reason why for god to do anything he will speak there has been nothing done by god in all of scripture and in all of time that was not preceded by his word and one of the ways you know faith is at work is that there will be a speech there will be a word spoken because faith speaks so the very life of faith which is the holy spirit is the spirit of faith is the one at work inside of us is the one that gives us the capacity to believe human beings have the ability to believe but the difference between the faith of human beings and the faith of god is that as a human being you can believe anything a human being can decide to believe in a doctor a human being can decide to believe in the things he sees he feels around him but when the god kind of faith is at work in a man that's on another level that faith allows the man to operate like god and we are going to look at it we're going to understand what it is but it begins by having the spirit of faith at work inside of you 12 spies were sent to the land of canaan to spy the land for the israeli nation 12 of them came back 10 amongst those spies all of them confessed that the land was good industrious highly economical flowing with milk and honey but 10 of them had a different confession 10 of them said that they were giants in the land and they are not able to take that land but there were two men who were different and among them was a man called caleb now caleb and joshua saw the same giants that the other 10 saw but their confession was different remember i told you faith starts with what a word spoken caleb says we are able to go up and conquer we are able to go if i he said let us go up at once and then when god was talking about caleb god appraised caleb's confession in numbers chapter 14 verse 24 he says there is a different spirit at work in caleb that spirit at work in caleb was what made him to make the confession he made that was different from the other ten he saw the same thing they saw but his confession was different 
and God said it is because there is a different spirit in him that spirit is what we call the spirit of faith when the spirit of God imparts the ability for you to believe beyond all impossibility that's what we call the God kind of faith you know that you know that you know all of a sudden there is no iota of doubt in you regardless of what happens around when you find that at work in a man that's not the normal faith of humans that's the God kind of faith to have the God kind of faith means to be convinced by God's word to be fully convinced by the word of God the Bible says in Romans 10 17 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God if it is hard that means it is spoken in other words he was not just talking about this physical word this written word alone no but the word spoken because he said faith cometh by hearing 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 the same Romans chapter 10 the Bible says in verse 6 it says the righteousness of faith speaks before God would do anything on earth he spoke everything he created he created by the spoken word and so the God kind of faith is the faith that is rooted in that which God has said is the faith that is convinced or to have the God kind of faith is to be convinced by God's word let me show you an example Romans chapter 4 verse 17 to be fully convinced by what God has spoken regardless of what you see around you is it possible let's look at it Romans 4 17 let's look at an example as it is written I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God this is the him now that was believed he says God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did next verse so the way God gives life to dead things is to speak forth his word the Bible says he speaks in such a way that he declares things that don't exist as though they already are existing if the Bible has said he calls those things that are not as though they are that would have been correct English that would have been saying that that would have been a statement of hope because you are trying to address future things with from the present isn't it when you are saying things that are yet to happen those are statements of hope but the bible didn't say he calls those things that are not as though they are he said he calls those things that are not as though they were in other words he says them as though they already were existing logical thinking means that to god there is nothing like impossibility to you the miracle is yet to manifest but when god says it he's saying it in a form of past tense that's what that, that, that's what we are looking at now we are trying to look at the god kind of faith let's go on verse 18 and who contrary to hope this is abraham now because he has believed in a god that can give life to dead things the end of everything is death but the bible says god is capable of giving life in other words where human beings describe as the end to god is a new beginning and abraham believed this god who gives life to the dead and calls those things that are not as though they were and the bible says who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations speaking of abraham according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be go on that was the word that was spoken to him god called him out one night when he was complaining of childlessness god said look at the stars count if you can count it so shall your descendants be it, he said look at the sun on the seashore if you can number them so shall your descendants be and i've explained it to us that figuratively it meant the stars the stars meant his spiritual children which we all are by faith in christ and the sun on the seashore represents his physical children because the sun 
speaks of the earth so imagine this god said if you can't count it that's how your descendants will be innumerable and abraham was foolish to believe that which god had spoken remember i said to have the god kind of faith is to be fully convinced fully convinced by the word of god let's go on and not being weak in faith how can a man become weak in faith very simple when today you believe god and then you step out and you see situations that are the opposite of what you are expecting and then you begin your confession is it becomes based on what you see no longer based on what you believe remember early this year i told you one of the definitions of faith i gave you i said faith is believing what you know more than what you see until what you see or what you believe becomes what you see isn't it believing what you know more than what you see until what you believe becomes what you see that means that what you see is changed and translated conformed to become that which you believe the bible says abraham who when there was no means to hope again he believed in hope and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of sarah's womb go on he did not waver at the promise of god that means god had spoken he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god next verse please and being fully convinced do you have it in king james remember i'm talking to you about having the god kind of faith what it means to have the god kind of faith and being fully persuaded huh? that means you are sure that you are sure that you are sure this kind of faith even if it doesn't happen again it doesn't change your belief your belief system has been confirmed this is not hope this is not something you are looking forward to hoping it will happen no it is trusting or it is living in the future as though it is in the present in other words what you don't see you are living in the very reality as though it is already part of you i wish somebody will understand what i'm saying and because i'm going to show you that many of us what we have is not faith is hope is hope the bible says i'm being fully persuaded apostle paul said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that he was writing to timothy he said because of this gospel that we preach we are going to go through a lot of things we are going to be persecuted he said but don't be afraid don't be ashamed he said allow yourself to suffer for the sake of the gospel i'm i'm paraphrasing the entire chapter now he said allow yourself to be to, to, to suffer for the sake of the gospel which has been revealed in christ who brought life and immortality and paul said because of this for this reason i am fully persuaded in other words paul was not afraid of persecution and peradventure death while preaching the gospel why he said because i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that which i have committed unto him what did he commit to god his life in other words what paul was saying that except god wills dying is not an option regardless of what we go through no wonder he said we are persecuted but he said i'm we are pressed but not crushed persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed you can imagine that he said having in our body the dying of our lord jesus so that in the midst of that death there is a superior life inside of me that will be revealed that's the reason why john the apostle all that they did to kill him didn't work they threw him inside boiling oil he didn't he didn't fry they threw him in the in the water for two days and two nights he did not die everything they did to take life out of him they couldn't why because they were operating by the god kind of faith the god kind of faith is the faith that is fully convinced ha ah, if you get to that point it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you again that's the faith that i call 
soul proof it's like a bulletproof a shield around your around your mind so that doubts and uncertainties cannot enter did the bible not say wherefore taking up the shield of faith where which you would quench the doubt of the enemy many believers are not operating with this kind of faith this was the faith that jesus had when he spoke to that fig tree and cursed it the bible didn't say that the fig tree withered immediately but look at the way jesus spoke to it he just he went to the tree wanted to eat some fruit no fruit and the bible says he said to the tree let no man eat of you hereafter again first of all do trees have ears a logical man looking at what jesus was doing will conclude that jesus had mental problems he's suffering from psychosomatic stress disorder you know that disease you don't know <laughs> if you want to hear all kinds of names just go to a mental hospital you will hear all kinds of names schizophrenia huh a mental retardation the, the person is mad you say he's retarded he's mad you are saying retarded in my opinion all all mad all mental cases are demonic i don't care the research you do medically in my opinion all mental cases are demonic because in trying to even prefer solution for the disease you have to behave mad yourself have you seen the way they treat them jesus said no man will eat of you ever after he didn't mind that he was talking to a tree he didn't mind that there were people around him they already were looking at him as a crazy person because of the things he was doing so he compounded this was he was on his way to jerusalem so he compounded issues the jews were after him the jews the the, the, the religious leaders were his greatest critic everything he did they wanted to take a news out of it he casted out demons they say it's because he has a demon now jesus walks to a tree I say no man will eat of you ever after if it was in our days the rulers and the pharisees they were going to be owners they were bloggers social media owners they will take news religious leader becomes a madman but the bible says jesus spoke and didn't care whatever was said again and walked away as though it was done and then the next day when they were passing peter saw that the tree was withered that's how the god kind of faith operates it doesn't say as it sees it doesn't say as it think it will be for god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think you know sometimes when we ask god for certain things there is a way we construct our prayer point we construct it in a way that it fits our own idea of possibility You can pray and say, Lord, I need a financial miracle in seven days. The reason why you said seven days is not because you are doubting that God cannot do it. But it's because to you, God cannot do the financial miracle before this night is over. So in your calculation, you have calculated how God will do the miracle. Talk to this person or somebody will call you. And so by your human calculation, your whims and your schemes, you have decided that, okay, at least in seven days, there should be one person that should remember me and send me money. So on that idea, you now pray and say, Lord, I receive a financial miracle in Jesus' name. That's how some of us do, isn't it? But the God kind of faith says it as though it has already happened. What did Dr. Kenneth Copeland say? Money! Come to me now. How many of you know that? He said, anytime you, anytime you need money, you should make that confession. Money come to me now. Not tomorrow. The God kind of faith is the faith that is fully convinced. Fully convinced about God's word. What has God spoken over your life? Chances are that if you are yet to see that miracle, it's either it's not time yet, 
or your faith has not been solid on that which was spoken let me tell you something it doesn't matter if it even if it's a prophecy even if the greatest prophet on earth prophesies on you it takes your faith your faith is what gives wheels to that prophecy to speedily happen you have to be fully persuaded to have the God kind of faith means to operate as God does it means to have the spirit of faith number one it means to have to be fully convinced by God's word it also means to operate as God operates and I've already mentioned it to you about Jesus there the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 that God commanded light to shine out of darkness he looked at darkness and he said let light be where was the light going to come from what you are seeing is darkness that means light is not available but the God kind of faith when you begin to operate like that you believe in such a way that situations can change to suit what you say and not the other way around it means to operate to operate that was the reason or the secret behind all the miracles in the time of Jesus Jesus will meet a blind man and say see he will meet a deaf man here they were taking a dead man to go and bury Jesus touched the casket and say arise at least let the man be alive first before you say arise Jesus say arise Lazarus died he said Lazarus is sleeping the God kind of faith forces you after you have believed and you are fully convinced of God's word, you begin to operate like God's operate. God operates. Your friends will begin to call you crazy. By the time you begin to live in that realm, I remember one day many years ago, no, not many years, just two years ago, 2019. After being broke for a long time, somebody one day, I don't know whether it was by mistake or, or it was by the mercy of God, sent some money to my account. And I was praying and fasting that week. I went to the bank. I withdrew the money. Or was it cash they gave me? I think it was cash or something. I never gotten that amount before. I carried the money and I spread it in my room. And I started matching the money and speaking in tongues. I said, money, you will serve me. Money, you will serve me. Money, you will serve me. And one of my friends came to the house to see me and he saw me doing that. And I looked at him, he looked at me, I, I could tell what was going on in his eyes. His eyes were like, Apostle, are you okay? I said, oh, are you machito? The confession is money, you must serve me. Oh, yeah. And so we started doing it. Now, that operation, that act, this is how God's kind of faith operates. And when I finished, I gathered the money and sold it out. And remained broke. And guess what? When I look at my life now, I don't think I'm serving money in any way. In the last two years, I've never sent a text to anybody and say, I'm broke, send me money. I've never, I don't even know how much, so, <laughs> I don't even care the money in their, their post. Recently, it's like it happens in 24 hours. So God has brought me to a state of rest as far as finances is concerned. A spiritual man is one who has the God kind of faith. Please be seated. Number three. When you have the God kind of faith, you will see unknown impossibilities. You will see things happen. That's the kind of faith that operates when a man is under the spirit of prophecy. Number three, a spiritual man is one who is not swayed by the pressures and vicissitudes of life. A spiritual man is one who is not swayed by the pressures and vicissitudes of life. One who does not dilly dally. One who is not moved by circumstances around. One who is not, go who is not moved by challenges one who doesn't dance to the tunes of situations circumstances around him or her one who is not ruled by the news 
and the things that people say what kind of a man is that that's a spiritual man a man who is not swayed second corinthians 4 16 to 18 one of my favorite scripture look at what it says it says for this cause we faint not though our outward man perish yet our inward man is being renewed it says for our light affliction verse 17 worketh for us a far more exceeding weight of glory that is to be revealed it said for we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which we see are temporal but the things which we do not see are eternal that's a spiritual man one who is not swayed by the things he sees what your five physical senses tells you is not what you live by that's a, that's a spiritual man did you read your bible the bible says the just shall live by faith romans 1 17 it was quoting habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 when you read the rendition in habakkuk 2 verse 4 it reads thus the just shall live by his faith this is what it means that you were justified declared righteous and saved by faith none of us saw when jesus died up to now we don't know whether it's a scam because it happened more than two thousand years ago but we believed that was what jesus meant when he told thomas he said you see you believe because you see he said but blessed are those who do not see speaking about our generation blessed are those who do not see but yet they believe he said for our light affliction ah, that's the man that believes that despite what i'm going through all of this will soon be exchanged for a greater glory i may be broke now but that's not my definition that's not who i am what i have or i don't have does not determine who i am i may be childless now but the bible calls me a mother of many children i may be jobless now but i already see myself sitting in a very high position i may have nothing now the bible says let the weak say i am what strong in other words take your gaze out of do you know that there were people before jesus performed miracles on them he had to get them to look away from their situation Many of you, God has been trying to get you to look above what you are going through without success. And that's why you have not gotten the miracle. Jesus wanted to heal a blind man. What did Jesus do? The Bible says, he brought the blind man out of the city. Come, sir. Why didn't he do it in the city where there were more crowds? so that he can get publicity isn't it the bible says he took the man he was patient he took the man out of the city and then the bible says he touched his eyes and spat on him and said be open another time thank you sir god bless you another time jesus was another blind man again in matthew matthew's gospel the bible says the man started shouting have mercy on me or oh, there were two of them the bible says jesus waited till he entered the house first what he was trying to do was get them away from their situation you can only experience a change when your eyes and your senses are taken off that situation or off that predicament the fact that everybody along your mother's lineage experienced lateness in marriage doesn't mean your own would this be the same he said now i'm 25 and that's how my mother and all her aunties aunt uh, or sisters they married late what if your miracle is around the corner a spiritual man is one who is not swayed by the vicissitudes of this life some of us are broke and when you are broke you don't have money everybody will know your face will become like a rainy season have you seen rainy season before everybody just knows by that look that you don't have money and you will make sure that is your confession for the rest of the day it will become the excuse for every failure you achieve that day is because i don't have money i don't have money i don't have money i know people who 
just because <laughs> I told you the story of my friend in the university those days who anytime he has just 10,000 naira in his account he will say he's seeing his period that he's broke he's broke if he has 10,000 he shouldn't go beyond 10,000 and he he, what he told me was that he experienced Boko Haram in this town you know that time people had to run away and all of that so he doesn't want to experience so he must always have money in the account because he's preparing for another experience and the experience never came many of us are too moved by the things around us many of us are born again no? but you are you are though you are born again and you have the potential of working as a spiritual man you are living as a natural man you are ruled by the things around you that's the reason why a lady will sleep with a man for money because she has allowed her lack to define who she is psalms 1 verse 1 to 3 let me show you something a man that is not moved by the pressures of vicissitudes of this life when last were you under pressure what was your reaction what did you do blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of the sinners nor seated in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night first of all the bible tells you what he doesn't do before telling you his obsession his obsession is what or who he is the bible says he walketh not in the counsel counsel means way of life the mentality of the ungodly the mentality of sinners the mentality of natural human beings there is a way by which they go they go about their activities the bible says he is a man that doesn't work in their counsel the counsel of the ungodly will teach you how to bribe your way the counsel of the ungodly you are looking for promotion or a particular favor after going through all the process the counsel of the ungodly will say who you know there the question is must you must you know somebody before you get it i know why you're not saying yes because many of us that's our that's our definition for a long time say i don't know somebody there not standard in the ways of the sinners not seated in the seat of the scornful then the bible gives us his obsession he says but his delight is in the law of the law and he meditates on it it has become his obsession he has become soaked in the word of god job said i found your word to be more than my necessary food that means if job were alive in our days he would read the word of god before breakfast that was how so the realities of the word of god became his reality everything that god said he was that was who he, he thought he was and he meditates on it day and night what do you meditate on many of us are so given to pressure many of us every little problem that happens around you already begin to shake I remember many years ago we were traveling from Abuja to Jalingo for a wedding we we're going to officiate a wedding about seven or, or nine of us or so and so we're in the car having a good journey we got to a border town between Benue State and Taraba State it, that town is become before um, Wukari or so and so everybody was asleep in the car just about the driver the pastor in front and myself at the back and then another brother the majority were ladies they were all asleep ladies please forgive me for what i want to say and then the driver did not see a speed bump that was ahead and before he he got there you know he saw the speed bump he was on high speed so he had to apply brake and when he applied the brake the brake didn't work so he hit the bike in front the two okada men in front and then they hit another car in front and literally this was not film trick i literally saw the man flying like you watch a film i saw it live i saw the one that hit the windscreen the other one was just fly i say is this how it is i was just looking at the situation somebody that was asleep shouted jesus from the sleep 
till they woke up. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they didn't see what happened. And you know the end of the story. We got down and then they cry all over the place. My, my, now, the, what, what made me surprised was these people were asleep. But some people have so they have so embraced eventualities of this life. They are used to problems around that it has become the dominion over their space. Every little thing triggers fear and anxiety. Yet the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Why did he say with thanksgiving? Because he said, before they call, I will answer. That problem you are going through is not bigger than God. It has never never and will never be bigger than him sometimes god will allow you to go through problems because he's looking for problems to test his power many of you have not allowed god to prove himself in your life by stepping out in faith that's the reason why god will allow certain problems to come he will perforate his protection around you a little so that problems will come not because he wants you afraid but he wants to trigger that faith inside of you that believes him above everything and in the midst of the storm you can still be asleep in a boat vicissitudes pressure pressure some of us are young now but if we bring a, a blood pressure um, instrument you will see that many people here have high blood pressure i'm telling you young people now it's no longer old people's disease a phone just fell down hey jesus jesus ah, ah. what is wrong with you and you are a spiritual man some of them can even be speaking in tongues and jumping self A spiritual man look at verse 3 it says and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his truth first of all he is established you know what it means to be planted it means to be rooted he is rooted in God he is rooted in the promises of God like Job said he said will, 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 will a man how did he put it he said shall a man live again or something like that he said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. Job said, though this skin is destroyed, yet in this flesh I will see God. He's established. He's not moved by what happens around him. And then the Bible says, he will be like a tree planted that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Because he's established in God's word, his own season becomes different from the others. Other tree would dry, would dry and die out during the drought. But because this one is founded by the rivers of water, there is no rainy season or dry season for him. He's ever fresh, bringing forth fruit in his own season. What does it mean? It means that when other people are crying, he's dancing. When other people are in sorrow, he's in joy. He said, for when men say there is a casting down, I will say exaltation has come. Psalms 112, another powerful scripture. I would like you to, I see, if you are a man here, particularly, these two Psalms I'm reading, I want you to go back and read it again and again. These are scriptures that have built fortifications around my life. 112 from verse 1. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2, we are reading down to verse 10. Quickly. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. I thought I would hear an amen. <laughs> Unto the upright, you know, <laughs> many of us think that it's not possible to live in that place. It is, oh. It is. Unto the upright, there ariseth light in the darkness. In other words, deliverance. I read a scripture in Proverbs today, chapter 11. It said, the righteous shall be delivered from trouble, but it will come on the head of the wicked. In other words, the trouble that befalls the righteous will be exchanged for the wicked one. What it means is that unbelievers will be used to bail you out of your predicament. You don't understand what it means. Ah. He said, unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. 
he is gracious full of compassion and righteous go on a good man deals graciously and learns he will guide his affairs with discretion it becomes more interesting now verse 6 he says surely he will never be what he will never be what shaking is it possible this is the state of a, a, a spiritual man he will never be shaken the report of the doctor tells you you have a very terrible disease the bible says he will never be what shaken you thought you were pregnant you went to the hospital they say you are not pregnant the bible says he will never be what shaking you applied for job 10 places in two months no one called you all of them are saying sorry the bible says he will never be what shaking he said the righteous will be in everlasting remembrance go on verse 7 now he will not be afraid of evil tidings bad news bad news from the village bad news on social media bad news on tv he will not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is steadfast trusting the lord i wish we could read all of it but there's no time if you read another translation he says his heart is fixed fixed there is a such a place where your heart is fixed on god and you are no longer moved by the things around you is there anything too hard for you to do i am that i am that's the song is there anything too hard for you to do i am that i am so your circumstances and the things around you or in your family doesn't affect you in luke chapter 12 verse 13 and 14 i think of 15 rather jesus told the man that came to him jesus told him he said a man's life does not consist by the abundance of what he has i want to preach this to somebody now i think it's in verse 15 a man's life does not consist of what of the abundance of the things that means you don't rate yourself based on what you have many of us our confidence most times is tied to how much is in your account yes or no yes many of us our confidence is tied to material possessions that we have some of us look at the people on the other side especially meduguri here and then you see your mate driving informatic bands maybe you were even classmate and that becomes a problem all of a sudden you put yourself under pressure why is he driving bands and i don't have bands and then you belittle yourself because you don't have four wheels that he has jesus said a man's life does not consist what does it profit a man that he gains the whole world and lose what his soul some of you god wants to give you the wealth he wants to bless you but he wants to give you sense first because if you don't have sense and he blesses you your case will be ecclesiastes have you read that book before a wise king became a foolish king the only sensible thing he made in that book was when he said this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and he said it at the end that means he lived a life of regret it was at the end of his life he regretted everything that happened of course he was confused 700 wives 300 concubines because he thought that his life was based on what he possessed he said it in ecclesiastes he said i planted olive olive trees great vines i got many servants i did this i had that i had this he said but all is vanity possessions of material things are good but it doesn't make you who you are you can go to hell having all those things i'm telling you but before you go to hell god will transfer the wealth to the righteous because the wealth of the hidden is laid up for who so that i don't go to hell with the you go empty a spiritual man is one whose life 
is not under the pressure and the vicissitudes of this life i don't know who god is talking to this night but it's time for you to look beyond your limitation don't allow your limitation define you. Don't allow your lack define you. Don't make yourself too cheap because of what you lack. No. No. You are blessed even without having anything. You are blessed. The Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It's only a matter of time. God wants to give you the wisdom by which they will be translated. hallelujah and lastly number four before we pray what is a spiritual man i told you that in the in number two i said a spiritual man is one who has the god kind of faith number three i said is one who is not swayed by the pressures and vicissitudes of this life finally number four a spiritual man is one who understands and is committed to a lifestyle of prayer and priesthood is one who is who understands and is committed to a lifestyle of prayer and priesthood prayer and priesthood the bible says in revelations 5 verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests that will rule and reign your dominion on earth as a believer is tied to your understanding of priesthood your understanding of priesthood you must stand as a priest before you can reign as a king what is priesthood quickly priesthood is the lifestyle that truly harnesses the nature of man priesthood is the lifestyle that truly harnesses the nature of man last week i taught you about the nature of man I told you that man is both spirit, is spirit, soul, and body at the same time. Man is the only being in the whole universe that can interact with all the realms. The spiritual realm, the sensual realm, and the physical realm. The reason why God made man like that is so that man can become an access point. Man can become a bridge. Man can become a gangway between two realms. You become a router. That's what I call it. Through you, things can be moved from one realm to another realm. You have more than just a fine face. That's not just all God gave you. There are many of us ladies who think our purpose is tied to the face we have. No. Do you know that you can force things to come from an invisible realm to this realm? Do you know you have such authority? Even demons don't have that authority. Priesthood. Is the activity that harnesses that nature jesus said in luke chapter 18 verse 1 that men ought always to pray and not to faint because prayer is the primary sacrifice of priesthood you know peter said that we have been made lively stones a spiritual house that will offer up spiritual sacrifices a priest is known for the sacrifice he offers and the primary the most immediate sacrifice that any believer can offer is prayer prayer is beyond praying for prayer points no in fact if your prayer is based on prayer points you have not started praying you don't have prayer life you have prayer points until prayer becomes more than prayer point until you pray because you are supposed to pray not because you feel like praying you feel like praying he said, I don't feel like praying. I don't. I tried to pray, but I didn't feel like. A demon has not sat on you before. Or you have not seen stagnation. Somebody say, why do bad things happen to good men? I'm saying it again. Put it on social media. Bad things will always happen to good men. Not just good men. Righteous men. When they don't pray. And even if your name is a Christian name, even if your name is Christian, you will see darkness having its way until you begin to awaken prayer. A spiritual man is one who understands first and then is committed. He knows that this is the true reason why man was created. Man was created to pray first. Because when you pray, you have created a portal 
between the natural and the, the spiritual for transactions to happen even god as powerful as he is can be limited in your life because of your prayer the extent of the hand of god that you have seen in your life i put it to you ladies and gentlemen is how much prayer you have offered yes i prayed three hours yesterday i prayed five hours two days ago can we see you do that for six years seven years eight years ten years until prayer no longer becomes a body it becomes a lifestyle you crack joke with him as his laughing tongues are coming out there's such a place so that's who it's true spiritual man it's not all these things we do in church let's define it so that we'll know I'm tired because I'm tired of seeing a lot of I have seen people prophecies hanging over their life and one by one the prophecies were not fulfilled in the time that was given and they blame pastors do you know that there are certain prophecies that the day it comes out for you you have to pray until you see the reality because Satan will fight it tooth and nail It's time for us to kick prayerlessness out of the church. It's time for us. The church is gradually diminishing in her light. We are the light of the world, but we are gradually diminishing in our light. Why? Because we have entertained laziness for a long time. Until prayer becomes a lifestyle. Until you see yourself as a medium. It's not only a witch that is a medium. You are a medium too. Everything that concerns your family is written and chronicled in a book in heaven. It is your prayer that will open that book and force the spirit of prophecy to begin to read it out. Do you know that every time you pray, every time you tarry in the place of prayer, files are open in heaven and angels begin to read out that which is written concerning you. Do you know? I know this one by encounters. That's the reason why prophecy doesn't come until prayer has provoked it. That sometimes I look at people and I want to prophesy on them, but it's not coming out. Probably because the energy that they have created by prayer to force that word is not sufficient. The Bible says of Daniel, it says, From the day you set your heart to know and understand, and you chastened yourself to pray, he said, From that day, your voice was heard. That a, a man has come to a point, he has prayed so much that even before he opens his mouth to pray, his heart is vocal before God. And the Bible says, An angel was released. But I like Daniel, even though the angel was held, Daniel kept praying until the angel came true. When was the last time your prayer and your act of priesthood forced certain doors open? Say, Apostle, I've prayed. I've prayed. It's not working. Okay, prayer is not the only activity of a priest. When last did you raise a, a sacrifice that pushed the hand of God your way? Okay, we don't like this one, but you know when you talk about giving these days, everybody... A true prayer warrior is a giver. And a true giver is a prayer warrior settled like it or not the bible says of cornelius he say your prayer and arms giving that means if my prayer is not vocal enough i will give until god turns and say who is this the bible spoke about the children of israel a prophecy came from elisha a major prophet he said you will not see ditches in, you will not see water in this valley but it will be, these ditches will be filled with water there will be no rain but there will be water and you will win the war against the, the king of Moab three kings prophecy on them to win they were already winning the battle and the bible says when the king could not break through he took his son who was going to be king in his place and offered him as a burnt offering to the wall and a battle changed sacrifice that's another aspect of priesthood Many of you have not touched that place. You have not given to a point where God comes and meets you and says, I make a covenant with you today. Huh?
Are we ready to pray? Are we ready to pray? <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but you have the opportunity to rewrite the history of your family. Enough of depending on men of God and prayer warriors. Some of us is the little blessing that God gave us that has swallowed your prayer life. You can't pray again. You have an apostle that if you need anything, let him release the blessing. Can I tell you something about my life? I don't pray only when I'm preparing for programs. In fact, I pray more when I don't have programs. Because I understand the place of investment. I keep building investment spiritually until a time comes when you don't even need to pray before you go for a meeting. As a spiritual man. Let me show you one scripture and we'll pray. Job chapter 21, verse 14 to 15. Job 21, verse 14 to 15. <laughs> If you see this scripture today, you will hate prayerlessness for life. Verse 14 to 15. Because you, by this scripture, you will know that your prayerlessness has spoken to God on his own. When you don't pray, you are telling God something. I will show you what you are telling God. He said, yet they say, give us from verse 13. Let's look at who these people are. First of all, they spend their days in wealth. And in a moment, they go down to the grave. So, these are a people who appear to be rich who appear to be prosperous materially and because of their material prosperity they came to a point where they felt that they did not need they, need, they needed god not god again they didn't need god again because they felt that their money could achieve everything for them verse 14 it says yet they say to god depart from us can you imagine he said for we do not desire the knowledge of your ways why verse 15 who is the almighty that we should serve him read the last line together want to go and what profit do we have if we pray hey is the one million that god gave the man that is deceiving him because he has one million and he can buy iphone what iphone what that sometimes i i, I wish I, I think that iphone is demonic sometimes because many people cannot rest now it's iphone iPhone, iPhone Pro Max. Because God gave him one million and a car. This was his statement to God. He said, Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? Be careful, oh, be careful of comfort, oh, be careful. When you are staying in a room with four people, heat everywhere, no light. You are still waking up in the night to pray. Now you have house. You have generator. You have AC. You can't pray again. You have become lazy. Now God has promoted you. You can't pray again. He said, who is the almighty that we should pray? What gain? What profit do we have? If we should pray. You don't pray because of profit. You pray because prayer is the profit. The more you pray, the more divine attention you attract. Until the traffic between heaven and earth on your life becomes too much. There are men that have prayed to a point where their altars are speaking on its own. They don't need to pray for you. There's a man of God I know in this country. I have proven this in his life for three years now. If I sow into his account, it doesn't reach 24 hours. It comes back. I've checked it out for three years consistently. I say, what kind of a man is this? And he doesn't know me. Is it possible? Today I read, it, I read a news online this morning about a woman, one of the former MDs of the old generation banks. She was diagnosed of cancer. Very wealthy woman. Doctors told her after the operation, they say you have only four days to live. What are the things that will make you happy so that we can get them for you? There is an agency here. They were in UK. Say so there's an agency here that can arrange it for you. Do you want to see the Queen of England? Do you want to see the President of US? She said she didn't understand what they were saying throughout that day and then in the evening her father in the lord called that they are boy. he said my daughter what is wrong she said they say i have cancer i have four days to live and according to the story he came the next day and laid hands on her and rebuked the cells after that day the next day they took her to the hospital 
and the doctors could not find the cancer. The doctors, here yeah, were their words. They said the cancer, the cancerous cells have gone into remission in 24 hours. You know what? When I read that thing, I dropped my phone and I asked myself, Jonathan, can you come to that point? That somebody is doomed to die and I touch the person and say, you shall not die but live. I know the Bible says in my name they shall cast out demons. In my name they shall raise the, the, all of that is possible when you truly begin to pray. It is your labor in the place of prayer that qualifies you to become a recipient of those realities. There are miracles you will never see if you don't pray. I've seen God do crazy things in my life, but I'm not satisfied because I know there is more. The current Miss Nigeria, most beautiful girl in Nigeria, she's from which state? Anambra state or so. They asked her, how did you become Miss Nigeria? She said a prophet prophesied to her three years ago that she'll win the contest. And this year, she knew by in her spirit that it was time. She abandoned everything in the U.S. She's a nurse. A beauty queen, oh. Some of you think beauty queens, they know Sabi all these things, ba? She left US, came to Nigeria. She said she fasted and prayed with her mom till the, the final day of the contest. Go check online, you'll see it. Madu Bike, that's her name. 2021, most beautiful girl in Nigeria. Then some of us here. It is your choice whether your destiny will remain where it is or not. As far as God is concerned, He said it on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. It is the game. It's now before you. It is left for you to define your, your realities. It is left for you to say, despite the fact I came from a cursed background, yet I will be the one that will bring light to that background. There are men of God in this country. The places where they have their churches are not major cities. But those places have become major cities, global cities, because of their church. Is Ota a major city? No. But people flock all around the world. I'm showing you how that you can create a space for yourself in the realm of the spirit. Do you know that you can pray to a point where the, the perfume around you begins to attract men, even strangers? If you are, ah, stand up, let's pray. You will know by practical. Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. Then he came again and said, To him that believeth all things. In other words, as far as God is concerned, he said to you, But for you, if you want to enter a realm where everything is possible, they are closing the port out tomorrow. I've not paid school fees. Do you believe that before 12 midnight, God can do a miracle? Yes. But it's not just enough to believe. The Bible says Elijah was a man of like passion. Have you prayed until you see what you believe become a reality? Are we ready to pray? I don't know about you, but I saw the limitations in my family and I told myself that if they have been known with those limitations because of my life, the world will know my family. And I began to establish an altar of prayer. Praying when there is need. Praying when there is no need. Praying when there is need. Praying when there is no need. I built prayer around my life. Praying in the morning. Praying at midday. Praying at midnight. Praying when you are alive. And praying when you are sick. Praying when you are broke. Praying when you have money. Huh? But tonight, God will release the spirit of prayer. Listen before we pray. Notice that in Genesis, God created man in chapter 1. In chapter 2, God formed man. But the man that God gave dominion was the man in chapter 1. The spirit man. Dominion is in the spirit realm. It takes prayer to activate it. It takes prayer to activate it. It's not this your body that God gave dominion. 
it's not this your physical life that God gave dominion. It comes from another realm. You finish it there and everything around there begins to act out like a play. To others, favor is locked. To you, favor is something you can manipulate. Why? Because you have mastered the laws of the spirit. Can we raise our voice in the next two minutes? I want you to lift up your voice and just begin to blast in tongues all over this place if you can. Pray, 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 pray. That's why you were created. That's who a spiritual man is. That's our design. Man ought always to pray and not to faint. Man ought always to pray and not to faint. Yes, there may be witchcraft attacked, but man ought always to pray and not to faint. Yes, yes. There may be attacks from your neighbors. There may be pressures around you. But men ought always to pray and not to faint. Giving up is not part of the option. Giving up is not part of the option. Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. But he prayed earnestly. I will not rest until I see a move of God in my time. I will not rest until this cross is rolled away. I will not rest until I see a change. Come on, do I have brave people? But <laughs> Holy 
Listen, I'm going to pray and speak over our lives. But I want you to know that an open door is a possibility in God when you pray. Blessings can be released in their timing when people pray. A new anointing is possible almost always when we pray. That's our design. That's what we're made for. That's our nature. Jesus said, met always to pray and not to faint. Please lift your hands. Holy fire. Holy fire. Burn upon my altar, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire. I want to pray for some of us, some of us who are down spiritually. The energy level in your life spiritually is very low. I want to pray and place a demand for grace to be released. He said, and he shall pour upon you the spirit of grace and supplication. Supplication is prayer. There is a grace that comes by the spirit of God that enables a man to chart his course in the place of prayer until energy is generated. Whatever weakness that you have been swallowed in over time, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you with your hands lifted. Lord, anyone here whose prayer life has gone down, has been under attack, has been under a siege, they are now become weak. They become lazy to pray. And as a result, a lot of things are happening around their space. Are you not the God that called those things that be not as though they were? Are you not the God that quickens the dead? I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, by the God that answers by fire, let fire be released on that prayer altar now. Let fire be released on that prayer altar. 
Let fire be released on that prayer altar. Lift your hands. Lord, I place a demand. Let a fresh anointing come upon your children today. An anointing that will enable them to walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit. He said, but thou hast exalted my horn as a new unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Let fresh oil come upon you now. 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 Lift your hands. If there is such a thing as the spirit of faith, I decree and declare from today, receive the grace and the capacity to operate by the spirit of faith in your life. Henceforth, you will believe and speak and declare as God declares. Listen, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. That grace that makes you walk in dominion, that grace that makes you courageous, for God has not given us the spirit of timidity, of fear, but of boldness, of power, and of sound mind. I declare that that grace comes upon you right now. Timidity is over in your life. Fear is over in your life. Receive the grace to believe beyond every reasonable doubt. In the name of Jesus. From today I decree and declare that you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious always and at all times. Listen. There is such a thing as the overcomer's anointing. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. There's such a grace as to overcome. I don't know and I don't care what you are going through right now. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died and rose again, I declare you from today an, an overcomer and overcomer always and at all times every problem every pit that the enemy is trying to swallow you up in I decree and declare by the power that raised Jesus from the grave step out of that pit now step out of that problem now receive the grace to be an overcomer receive the grace to overcome receive the grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give him praise. My God, I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing strong. From today, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. I'm prophesying it to you. You are an overcomer. You are coming out of that challenge. You are coming out of that pit. You are coming out of that trial. You are coming out of that furnace. You are coming out of that pain. He said, after he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You are coming out as gold. You are coming out as gold. You are coming out as gold. Receive the breakthrough anointing. And David called the name of that place, Baal Perazim. He said, for the Lord has given us breakthrough over the enemies. I don't care whatever siege has been laid on your life. I don't know why I'm prophesying. I don't care every demonic siege that may have been around your life. The siege of poverty, the siege of lack, the siege of delay, the siege of pain. Every siege that has been around your life is breaking now. It's 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 breaking now. So glorious in your ways. <laughs> you are glorious. So glorious. Listen. If you know you are here and you are not born again, 
while I'm talking, I want you to make your way to the front very quick. Or you need to rededicate your life afresh. While I'm talking, I want you to make your way to the front very quick. Very quick. Listen to me. While they are coming out, listen. No movement anywhere. Listen. I see doors opening. Doors opening. Spiritual doors, physical doors, financial doors, doors of opportunities. The best time of this year for you is now. You've often heard it said, your best is yet to come. But I speak by an apostolic and a prophetic grace. I speak as one sent by Elohim. Your best is not yet to come any longer. Your best is here and now. Your best is here and now. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. Your best is here and now. Wave your hands. eyes closed very quickly before we close eyes closed everywhere all standing if you are here and you need to give your life or your heart to the Lord afresh or you want to rededicate your life what a moment to return to the Lord take your eyes away from the shame of coming out take your eyes away of how people will look at you this is why you came tonight so that God can restore you that you can carry his image and truly become born again and saved. It is only when you are saved that you can operate by faith. Because you are saved by faith. Or you need to rededicate your life. You used to be a believer. Several things have happened. And you don't know where you are with God. I count to ten right now. And I want you to make your way to the front. All eyes closed. I count to ten. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Take your eyes away from the shame. Take your eyes away from what you have done. Let your past remain in it, the past. God gives you a new life now. God offers you a new beginning. It doesn't matter where you have been. Five. Six. Seven. You can join her if God is talking to you now. Eight. Nine. Ten. I want us to stretch our hands, pray for her. The Bible says there is joy in heaven when one sinner repents. My dear, you in front, I want you to just say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I leave my past behind me. And I accept eternal life. I believe that you died and rose again for my salvation. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Father, I declare by the authority of Scripture that our sins are forgiven. I declare that she is born again henceforth. I declare that your life is at work in her spirit. And I decree and declare that from today she is victorious above sin, above death above the devil all the days of our life she will serve you and love you in jesus name